Hey everyone, my name is Anne and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be crocheting this cropped Suzette top. I will be making a small in this video, but you can find sizes X small to 3X large in this tutorial and in the written pattern that I have linked down below. But here are the supplies you'll be needing for this project. So to get started on this pattern, I have over here my 5.5 millimeter hook and then my category 4 yarn. I will first make a slip knot. From here, we will make a chain of 41, but since this video includes sizes X small to 3X large, the amount of chains that you'll be making for each of the sizes will be indicated right above. But to make a chain, all you want to do is just yarn over pull through, again yarning over and pulling through until you have a total of 41. So I have made it back here with my chain. Beginning on row 1, we will skip this first chain and inserting our hook into the second chain, we will single crochet. To single crochet, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through yarn over and pull through two. Now into this same chain, we will work another double crochet. To work a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now skip the next chain. Into the next chain, we're going to work one single crochet and one double crochet. Again, Inserting your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. That is our single crochet. Now one double crochet, yarning over, insert your hook into that same chain, pull through, two, and two. Skip the next chain, work one double crochet and well, one single crochet and one double crochet into the next chain. That was our single crochet and then into this same chain double crochet now repeat doing our Suzette stitch skipping a chain then work a single crochet double crochet into the next chain and to each across until you have one chain at the end remaining So I have just finished working my Suzette stitch all the way across my chain and I have this one chain remaining at the end of row one and to this last chain work one single crochet. From here, chain one, turn your work around and that chain one does not count as our first stitch. So moving on to row two, skipping this first chain and inserting our hook into this first stitch, we will work one single crochet and one double crochet. So into this first stitch, single crochet, and then into the same stitch, double crochet. Now skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, work again one single crochet and one double crochet. Again, skipping the next stitch, single crochet, double crochet. This is what your work should be looking like. So I'm going to continue working my Suzette stitch into each stitch across my row until I have one stitch at the end remaining. Thank you. 
So I have finished working down my row until I have two stitches remaining at the end. We're going to skip the second to last stitch and into this last stitch work one single crochet. From here, chain one, turn your work around. And now to continue this pattern, you want to repeat this row, which is row two, until you have a total of 32 rows. But I have indicated the amount of rows you'll be making for each size right up here. But since I'm making a size small, I'll make a total of 32 rows. And once I am done with that, I'm gonna meet you guys back for the next steps. So I am back here with my 32 rows. This is what my bodice is looking like so far. Once I reach that last row in the last stitch, I cut and fastened off. So now you want to repeat this process one more time for our back panel. And I have already done that over here. I just did 32 more rows of that Suzette stitch. And now that we have both of our bodices, we're going to move on to the next step, which is seaming them together. So let's go ahead and begin on that. So to seam our front and back panels together, I have my tapestry needle with some excess yarn. I'm going to turn our bodices to the side and then inserting my needle right into the corners through both panels, just like this, and then pulling straight through. From here, we are going to whip stitch into each stitch across along the side until we reach the other end point. So to do a whip stitch, I'm going to turn all the way back around, insert my hook into the next two loops on, on both of these panels, pull straight through, just like this. And then just doing the same thing, whip stitching all the way across the edge here until your work is seamed up. And then I'll meet you guys back to cut and fasten off once I reach the end. So I have just finished seaming all the way down my edge. And now that you have one side done, repeat this same process for the opposite side, which is just beginning into this bottom corner. Whip stitch all the way across until you reach the opposite corner. So I will just quickly work that off camera and then I'll see you guys back when I'm all done. So I have made it back here with the seaming on both sides. I cut and fastened off once I reached the end. And once I was done with that, I turned my work inside out. So this is what our seams look like once I have turned the work inside out. And now from here, we're going to move on to working the sleeves. So let's go ahead and get started on that over here. So now we're going to get started on the sleeves and I'm going to first make a slip knot. From here, we're going to count 10 stitches from the side and then insert our hook into this 11th stitch. So I'm going to count 10 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then insert my hook into this 11th stitch. We will slip stitch to secure just like this. Now from here, I'm going to make a chain of 37, but if you need to adjust the, the length of your strap, go ahead and make any chain that is an odd number. So once you have your chain of 37, we're going to count 10 stitches from the side and then insert your hook into that 11th stitch. So same thing as we did last time, 
I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then into this 11th stitch, insert your hook, and then yarn over to slip stitch. So you should have formed a loop just like this. Now from here, we will chain one. From here, chain one. And now beginning into this first chain, we're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way across our strap. So to half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into that first chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and that's our first half double crochet. Again, yarning over, insert your hook into this next chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and then just continue to half double crochet into each chain all the way across, and then I'll meet you back once I have reached the end. So I have just finished these 37 half double crochets down my chain. And now we're going to continue our half double crochets coming all the way around here. So beginning into this first open stitch, we're going to half double crochet into this stitch. Just like this. And then just continue to half double crochet into each stitch all the way around until you have ended where we began in the first stitch. So once you have finished the half double crochets for your underarm section, we are, we are going to slip stitch into this first stitch to join this row. Just like this. From here, chain one, turn your work around. And now beginning on row two, into this first stitch, we will half double crochet into each stitch all the way around our armhole. So just beginning into this first stitch, half double crochet, and then just continue doing this all the way around your armhole until you reach the end. So I have just worked those half double crochets into each stitch all the way around. And just as we did last time, you want to slip stitch into this first stitch to join the row. Once you have made it here, chain one and turn your work around. And now we're going to work on our Suzette stitch. So skipping this first stitch and inserting our hook into the second stitch, we will work one single crochet and one double crochet. So that's our single crochet, and then back into the same stitch for that double crochet. Skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, work a single crochet and a double crochet. Skip a stitch, then single crochet, double crochet. And repeat this stitch pattern until you've made it into each stitch all the way around and have one stitch at the end remaining. So I am back here with my Suzette stitch and I have this last stitch remaining to end my row. Into this last stitch, simply work one single crochet to finish and then slip stitch into this first stitch to join. Chain one, turn your work around. And now to continue this pattern, you want to repeat this row, which is row three, until you have a total of 18 rows for your sleeve but you can add or subtract any amount of rows here if you want a longer or shorter sleeve. But I'm going to go off camera, work up these 18 rows with my Suzette stitch, and then I'll see you guys back when I'm all done. 
So I am back here with my 18 rows for my sleeve. And now we're almost done with our sleeve. The last thing we're gonna do is just do two decrease rows. So I have already slip stitched into the first stitch to join. And I'm just gonna chain one, turn my work around. And now beginning into the second stitch, we will do a single crochet decrease. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that second stitch, yarn over, pull through, insert my hook into that next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Going into the next stitch, we're gonna do the same thing. Insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And now continue doing these decreases into each stitch all the way around your sleeve. And then to join, just slip stitch into that first stitch. So I just finished up at that decrease row into each stitch around, slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one, turn your work around, and now we're going to do that last row to our sleeve, which is a, another decrease row. So into this first stitch, not into the second stitch, but into this first stitch, do a decrease. And then just continue doing these single crochet decreases into each, each pair of stitches all the way around. And, it, and as always, slip stitch into that first stitch to join, and then cut and fasten off once you reach the end. So I just finished up that last row to the sleeve and cut and fastened off once I reached the end. And now that you have one sleeve all complete, you want to repeat this process for the opposite side as well, which as you can see, I've already done. And once you have both of your sleeves, we're going to clean up the edge along our neckline. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So getting started on the neckline, I will first make a slip knot. From here, I will insert my hook anywhere along the edge of our neckline. I want to do it right in the middle because why not? I'm going to insert my hook and then yarn over to slip stitch to secure. From here, chain one. And now we're going to single crochet into each of these stitches beginning into the first stitch until we reach our first corner over here. So just beginning into this first stitch, simply single crochet until we reach that first corner. So now I am one stitch before our first corner and into the next three stitches, we're going to pull together these three stitches for a decrease. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, into the corner stitch, pull through, and then into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over and pull through four. From here, we're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around until we meet the next corner of our work. And so I have just worked around my sleeve until I have met one stitch before our corner. We're going to do the same thing as we did in the other one. Insert your hook into that stitch, pull through, into the corner stitch, pull up a loop, into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through four. From here, single crochet into each stitch across along here until you've reached your next corner. And then do that same decrease and work all the way around until you reach the last and fourth corner. Do a decrease and then slip stitch into the first stitch to join. So I'm going to do those two more decreases and then I'll see you guys back once I have reached the end over here. So 
So two more decreases later, I slip stitch into the first stitch to join and then I cut and fastened off my work. And that's all we're going to do for our neckline. The next step we're going to do is just do the front section. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So beginning on our middle section to our top, we're first going to do a slip knot. From here, make a chain of 100. So after you have your chain of 100, we're going to weave this chain beginning into the center of our bodice. So I'm just going to go right into the center here. Pull that straight through. And now using the other end of our tail, we're going to weave this all the way down, coming in at two rows. So I'm going to skip these first two rows. And then I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to pull the chain straight through. Just like this. And then coming in into the next two rows, pulling that chain straight through. And then keep on doing this until you are halfway across. So I'm almost there. This looks about right. So now we're gonna do the same thing but on the opposite side. So I'm going to skip this first stitch into this next stitch. I'm going to weave my hook through and then pull that chain through this stitch. Next, we are going to do the same thing. So we're going to skip these first two rows and then into this next row, weave our chain through. Skip two rows and weave your chain through, just like this, and then doing that again. So once your work looks like this, we're going to tighten it up. From here, you can knot it or make a bow. I'm just going to make a bow to finish this up. And once you have both of these ends, you can go ahead and cut your two loose ends. Now this is what the front is looking like. Looks really good so far. And yeah, that is the end of the tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. The last thing you would need to do is just weave in all of your extra loose ends if you haven't already. But yeah, that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. So bye! If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. If you bought this pattern, it would be super helpful if you left a positive review. But yeah, bye guys!